Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. In my hands is the other history of the DC Universe, number five, wrapping up the brilliant miniseries. And it's uh, it's a hell of an ending. It's a hell of a finale. And really, I think, bring home brings home the, the, the themes and connects all the, well, like a lot of the previous issues. And I want to say all the previous issues, but a lot of the previous issues. And I think really shows off kind of the brilliance of the series. So it's written by John Ridley, layouts by Giuseppe Camoncoli, finishes by Andrea Cucci, uh, colors by Jose Villarubia, lettering by Steve Wands. Um, so this follows Anissa Pierce uh, from 1981 to 2010. Uh, Anissa Pierce is the daughter of Jefferson Pierce, uh, Jefferson Pierce being Black Lightning. Uh, so the, for those who've been following my reviews and just of know of the series, that Black Lightning was the character focused on in the first issue. So this really brings things Full circle. Um, so the concept of the other history of the DC universe is an exploration uh, of exploration. I don't know if I just said exploration or expiration. Exploration of the DC universe from perspective of um, uh, we'll call uh, uh, non-white characters, non-mainstream white characters. Uh, so it's followed characters like Black Lightning, um, uh, Katana. Uh, Renee Montoya and and now Anissa and and it's a really been a fascinating series. Uh, one in the the blunt truths that it drops, but like it really I think examines the DC not just the DC universe but like our real world. Um, it's done a hell of a job and and to me it's, it feels like a masterclass, a you know a college level uh, course on on history and a lot of socio political issues. Um, this one, you know, taking place in the, the 80s to 2010, you know, it's, it's a good chunk of my life. Um, you know, not all of it, but, uh, you know, I was, I was born in 79, so, you know, I, I went, I, for the most part, kind of, I would say, contemporary of Anissa's. Um, and it's, it was, it's interesting going through this history because it dives into some of the real history of that time. Um, it takes us through the 90s of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It takes us through um, the bullshit of the 2000s and the Iraq War and the uh, attempt to ban gay marriage. Um, and it also, uh, I think, rightly criticizes uh, the election of, of uh, Barack Obama as president and how we quickly declared racism dead and that we we're in a post-racial society and all that bullshit that we know was was utter crap then, but I think so many people just refuse to to believe it. Um, and I think the the issue, like one, it goes through the history of of the Pierces, and I think that's it's really fascinating because we have a, a main character who isn't just a superhero, but black woman and gay, and also a superhero. So you know she's she's got you know four checks on that one of of people disliking her. And and it really is, I think, a fascinating um, perspective from her. You know, her, her father, and it's kind of hinted, not really hinted, it was just straight out stated in, the, in his issues that he a little bit baited towards uh, homosexuals against uh, gay, gays. Um, and this circles back on that. And um, it's, I think it's a really interesting thing is, you know, Black Lightning is such a, a, a beloved character now and, and praised character now. We, we've seen it because of the television series. Uh, this kind of, you know, takes some of that shine off of him. Um, and this gives, uh, I think, uh, reminds us, it gives us a perspective from his daughter um, and that he, he was kind of an asshole, um, at least in the comics. And, you know, going through that family dynamic is, I think, really, really interesting. Uh, and and she takes us through, I, I would say it really just feels like a... What's, it's, it's interesting is, that, like, the issue and a lot of stuff discussed, like, I think depending on where your what your background is coming at it you're going to take it through different ways like there this could very much be just a story about being a woman through the 80s, 80s and 90s it could be about uh, being gay in the 80s and 90s uh, it could be about being black in the 80s and 90s um and 2000s and it uh and it could be about being all those things and i think it's really interesting as like whatever perspective or whatever background you have and perspective you have is i think really going to um it's really going to, you know, t uh, get you to focus on different things in this issue, and you probably might take away different things. Um, 
But for me, like I just I, I think it's a really interesting perspective of why we fight. Um, and I I think at the end, Ridley's his thesis comes together, um, and this issue really explains the the struggle, the ongoing struggle. Um, I think there's a it's a really interesting thing in that that she she confronts her father and he he admits he says you know i i didn't want you to fight because it it feels makes me feel like i'm a a failure that i wasn't able to to do what i needed to do and and succeed um and as someone who who works in politics as someone who you know is fighting the fight um who who feels like he's trying to make things better for the next generation um you know it it hit me a little bit you know it's one of those that the there's always going to be struggle. And I, I think that's, that gets missed by a lot of people is that, you know, you, you might win one battle, but there's, there's an ongoing struggle. And, and in reality, there's always a new evil around the corner. And I think that's what this issue really emphasizes is that, you know, characters like Black Lightning, characters like Bumblebee, um, you know, characters like Jon Stewart, you know, they, they were created so others could follow, if that makes sense, and that they they set the path so that others could you know others could be created and they can continue a, a different a, a struggle. It might be a slightly different struggle, and it might be some of the same struggle. Um, but I I think it's it's really kind of I think really emphasizes that is that like just because the struggle continues doesn't mean the past is a failure. And I, I think it's a it's a really interesting perspective, and I think it really nails home a lot of what's going on today in the real world. Um, he, this issue, and I think it was the previous issue. I don't remember if it was the one before that. Like he really started to shift from a, a a critique of the DC universe to pop culture reflecting our failures or our reality. Um, and in this couple issues, he's he has himself put a spotlight on the failures of our reality, um, and the bigotry that that existed, and that you know comics reflected um, in various ways and dealt with in various ways. And it's it's a very like taken as a whole. These five issues I think are absolutely amazing, and and he's done an amazing job, really dissecting, and I think making an argument and case for his vision of, of not just DC, but the world as a whole. Um, and again, I, this is, this is, a, a each issue I think is absolutely fantastic and well worth reading and, and debating and discussing. And I'm, I mean, Ridley to me is an amazing, amazing creator in everything he does. Um, the art is as usual, um, fantastic. I love the pay, the layouts of everything. I love the, the use of uh, this, you know, the different history or different years and different styles of art, um, it all just blends seamless, seamlessly together. And I, I think, you know, while this is kind of labeled as a, a, a comic book, this really does feel like a graphic essay more than a comic. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just, it's another amazing issue. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And I, I think Ridley brings his his amazing talent to be able to discuss real world issues through pop entertainment to this series and and do so in a way that gets readers to think um it's 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 a triumph of the series it's utterly brilliant and i i hope we see more i would love to see more um because it's just one of those that every single issue got me to think so um yeah, I mean, obviously, clearly, I recommend this. I recommend every issue. You don't need to pick up any previous issues. You can just go and read this, uh, though this one uh, does a great job of, I think, touching some of the stuff of, of, of previous issues. Uh, go get it. It's it's a brilliant, brilliant series. When it gets collected, absolutely go get it. Uh, out now at Comic Shops, so you can get it. we uh, got a link beneath this video. Put in your zip code at Telva Shops near you. No shop, no problem. We have some affiliate links. There are affiliate links, so we get a small percentage by doing that. You help support our site, so thank you. Uh, and just watch our videos to support us, so thank you for that. Uh, if you are into DC Comics or into comics in general, check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com or on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, 
all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading those comics, and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.